Hello, everybody. I'm Nina Soden, urban fantasy author of the Blood Angel series, the Sector C series, and the newly released The Beast Within. And today I am so excited because I have Grace Rose Thomas here with me. She is an urban fantasy, young adult urban fantasy author living in Melbourne, Australia. You are going to love her accent. She is a <laughs> lifetime lover of reading, historical fantasy and fiction being her favorite genre with gothic horror coming up as a close second. She loves indie books and like all of us indie authors, will scream out to the world that there is a plethora of amazing authors out there for you if you will tap into the indie author world. Please, please, please don't ignore your indie authors. So let's jump right in. I wanna to talk to you today about your series, The Avian Chronicles, and especially a little bit more about Awaken, which Kind of excites me because the very first book I ever wrote was entitled Awaken. So I want to know about yours. Do you have a copy of it there with you? Yeah. Oh, look at how pretty that is. <laughs> All right, let's start with something simple. Read me the back cover so that we can get the viewers excited about this book. Okay. All right. All right, average, normal, boring. These are the words Sophia Woodville would use to describe herself and the past 20 years of her life. But with her best friend by her side, a successful career as a nurse to lean on and a doting nan, that's okay with her. There's only one thing standing in the way of Sophia's regular existence, destiny. It is Sophia's destiny that will take her into an ancient world hidden in plain sight filled with angels, demons, and a power beyond her wildest imagination. But Sophia cannot simply visit this strange, mysterious world. She must save it. Awaken takes the reader along Sophia's wild, globe-spanning journey of self-discovery, unravelling a compelling history of servitude, original sin, and forbidden love. You think you know the story, but are you ready for what happens when the saviour will awaken? Oh, that sounds so good. Okay, so how many books are in this series? Four. It was originally three, but number three kind of went mm -mm -mm -mm, yep. and sort of took on a life of its own. Okay, very cool. And are they all out and available for people yes, to purchase? Yeah, so um, uh, last sort of September, October-ish, I put the third and fourth book out about six weeks apart. Okay. Now, I love the fact that she is a nurse because you are a nurse. Is that correct? Right. So yeah. how much of yourself has gone into this story and into this character? Well, um, at the time, I probably wasn't realizing it, but Sophia is very much like me. Um, I'm horrendously shy. Um, I don't particularly like attention, which is quite ironic with what we're doing now and <laughs> writing a book and marketing self-promotion that sort of really challenges who you are yes. so a lot of Sophia's personality is me and I suppose her supernatural journey is kind of like me over my life where I've had to uh, face situations and get stronger and grow and that's kind of what she's like yeah okay okay so where did you get the idea for not only this book but the series where did that come from what inspired you well, this particular story actually came from a dream I had years ago, and I had it a few times. Um, it was very simple compared to what the story is now, but I had this dream, and actually, I have a lot of nightmares, and um, <clears throat> I had this one a few times. It was sort of over a few weeks, and do you ever have a dream like where you're drowning or like, yeah. it's quite scary. And um, I had this dream where um, there's this massive wave, like a tsunami coming at me, and in this vision, there is this like angel bent over and he looks battle weary and run down and just absolutely worn out. Oh, that was the dream. And I just thought to myself, what would wear an angel down? And that's pretty much where it came from. And how long did it take you to write Awaken? 
So the first one took me about a year. I'd actually taken some time off nursing. I was an ICU nurse for 17 years. I've got a bit of burnout and I thought, mm, I need a break. Yeah. So I sat down and started writing it, not really knowing where it was going. And so that took me a year and then folded on from them. And the whole series has taken a few years in the end because I did go back to nursing. Um, but yeah, from beginning to end, about a year. So. Okay. So what does that process look for you? Are you a plotter? Are you a pantster? What is your writing process? Okay. Big pantser, loose plot. So okay. the, the ending has never wavered. The way the books end is how I imagined it in the beginning. Okay. The characters, like Sophie, the main character, she was always there. <clears throat> Everyone else has just sort of been interlopers who've appeared during the process, but the, the ending is exactly the same as how I imagined it. It's just all sort of weaved and changed and morphed along the way. So did you know when you started Awaken, did you know Awaken or did you know from beginning till the end of the series and it just took you a little while to get to each of them or did they come individually? Um, yeah, I knew Awaken and okay. I, got the first book out, but I didn't know until I got to the end of the first book, it was going to be a series. Oh, I you thought, thought it was I, a standalone. Yeah. So I thought when I started writing it, that that ending was coming yeah. at the end of the book, but it did like the thing I've learned through the journey is, I mean, I suppose it's the way I write the characters. Strangely, I know it sounds a bit cliche. They actually do take over and they become quite real in your mind. And there was lots happening and then you're writing and um, something happens, but then something else has to happen and then something else has to happen. And then suddenly you realize you've got all these sort of little mini story arcs going along. And yeah, so it was awakened. And then I got to the end and I thought, huh, I think we have to keep going. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I think that's only something an author can understand that those characters, they really do take on a life of their own and they are part of you as an author you are with them for so long that they feel like family i know my characters are constantly talking in my head until i get my stories out and then i'm like okay shut up <laughs> like, okay so tell me what comes next you've got these four books out in this series what are you working on now what can your readers expect well i'm taking a bit of a leap i am um just finished and I'm editing through a gothic horror novella. So something a bit darker, something not young adult, a, a little bit more sort of new adult. Yeah. Um, yeah, just I, I've never used to read that style, but since, since I'm getting enmeshed in the indie author world, I've made some really fabulous author connections and made some great author friends who write in that style. So I started reading that and that's the great thing about being in the indie community is I've tried different genres and I find I really quite love it. So yeah. I'm having a little go. Um, I've written it. Um, now I'm editing through it and sort of just going, oh, so, but that's where we're going. And I'm quite excited about the story. And I actually have in the background of that, a full length Gothic horror novel. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so what so is your, what is your editing process like? I know with me, I go through tons of beta readers, tons of professional edits, back to beta readers, and then another round of my edits. So what does that look like for you? Okay, so obviously I've not trained in creative writing. I've been a nurse my whole life. This has been a big learning process for me about what I do, what I wanna do, and what the right thing to do is. Um, yeah. What I do now and what I've always done is I kind of, I write, I stop for a bit, I go back and re-edit. I kind of edit and edit and edit and edit as yeah. I go. If I hit a bit of a stumbling block and I get a bit of a, you know, writer's block, yep. I'll go back to the start and do a reread through. So I can say I have read my books probably a thousand times um, and then I will send them to a proofreader or a beta reader to get a feel does it, is it good? What would you fix? Da, da, da. Um, and then I send it off to an editor. Um, so yeah, I was like, try, do as much as I can 
and get it as neat and tight as I can and then send it off to an editor at the end to be ripped apart and screwed up and sent back and start again. <laughs> so Covered in red ink and yeah, yeah. I tear quite enjoy inducing. I, I quite enjoy it because I've, I've actually learned a lot. I really yeah. have. Yeah. I have a love-hate relationship with my editors. You know, <laughs> I, I love them because inevitably they make the stories so much better. Yep. But I hate it because that process, you know you're going to get it back and it's going to be covered with ink and you're going to be like, oh my God, I suck. I'm the worst author in the world. <laughs> so, like the hardest thing is where they say, love this chapter, but it doesn't but. move the story forward. Cut it. And I'm like, oh. yeah, but that was my favorite part. Yeah. It's literally like removing a limb. It is. So, it is. Yes. It's like, <laughs> it's killing your, your, creativity and your babies those words every word you're like oh but I thought about that word I really really thought about that one <laughs> so, yes, yes. no I completely understand I completely understand that I'm getting better I'm getting better yeah so. <laughs> it, it takes time mm -hmm. I've been writing a long time it, it takes time I still yes. have yes. a hard time sometimes I, I, agree, I agree with 90% of what my editor suggests and then sneak in a few other things like nah, I can't right. let that go right <laughs> Yes. And I think that's good. That's that is your creative right as an yeah. author. It's your yeah. creative right. So yeah. tell me, how long have you been writing? When did you start? Well, look. To be honest, you now I know a lot of people say hey, I've been writing since I was little. I've written stories. What I've been doing since I was young is thinking about them. I think about them. Think about them. Imagine them. Never write them down. I literally started writing something down when I wrote the first paragraph of Awaken. And that was purely because I um, read another indie author's book this one day and it was wonderful. It was amazing. And I actually, like a lot of people, I like to go and see who the author is. And I went to her website and looked at her bio and she sounded just like me. She was like, Oh, I always wanted to be a writer, but I went to uni and I did this. And then I got to about 30 and I thought, I'm going to write a book. So I sent her an email. I said, oh my gosh, you've really inspired me. I, I read your book and I read your bio and I felt really inspired by you. And I've written the first chapter of my first ever story and thinking nothing more. I got this huge email back from her. And from that day to this, we've become, we've become friends and she's been a great inspiration. So she's the one that actually made me write first and she's who I dedicated Awaken to. That's yeah. awesome. That is yeah. So cool. I, I love hearing stories like that. And I love hearing stories about people who just try. I mean, if you have a story and if you have a desire, just just do it. Just write it. Who cares? Just just get it on paper. So I, I love that. I love that she encouraged you because too often we can tear people down or be, see people as competition. And in this world, so many indie authors are so encouraging and it's yeah. it really is a community yeah, so I'm I've, glad I've generally made some of my best friends in my life I've, I've been in on this planet for quite a while now and um i'd say some of the most genuine people um i know are my indie author friends in fact so much so uh pre-covid i flew over to england and i met my um editor and i met some of my besties and my beta readers it was amazing that is awesome. Yeah. Pre-COVID, pre life was different back then, yeah, wasn't was it? Uh, what was that? Well, what was uh, life like back I then? <laughs> mm. All right, so we've talked a little bit about your books. We've talked a little bit about your writing process. What advice would you give to new authors? Oh my gosh, uh, this is what I would have liked. I would have liked to hear, uh, reach out and network from the very beginning. Get onto the social medias. For me, Instagram is the best. Um, and just start making friends and connections and talking to people, reading other indie yeah. books or reading any book, to be honest, and um, just develop some connections because I have learned a lot um, through those friends. And what I have gained is um, be selfless about it because... I, I like to promote other people and, you know, shout at other people. And you just kind of find that then people every now and then, and they'll shout you out. And yeah. um, probably the single biggest thing that um, helped my book is I, I was reading someone else's book once and um, 
uh, loved it. And, you know, just having some general chit chat on this person's page. Out of the blue, this person who's actually a traditionally published author, um, I didn't know, bought my book, read it, put it on his Insta page, and he has mega followers. And I, wow. And I had no idea. I didn't even know he really noticed me. But, you know, just making those little connections, and you just never know where a bit of that support will come from. I would also say the biggest thing, I've made every mistake that an indie author can do, you know, <laughs> your excitement and your enthusiasm. You really don't realise that the world out there is actually trying to eat you. Um, yeah. Don't pay for anything. You know, there are a lot of scammers out there. Um, I've worked out the ones that are genuine, but I've been caught by some pretty unpleasant ones. So pretty much if people cold email you saying, oh, I'll do this for your book or just delete. It's it's sad, but it's true. That's why I think the connections um, with other authors and then readers and, you know, the, the bookstagrammers, the book bloggers on there who, you know, really are genuine. That's where I found good um, advice, good support. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I do oh, think and that... Another one, another one, sorry, sorry. And get a good editor. So, yes. Yes, yes, get a good... It took me a while it, and put your money aside for a good editor. A lot of people just don't, but put some money, save some money for a good editor. A good editor is expensive, but well yes. worth the yes. money. Yes. Well yes. worth the money because you don't know, there are so many authors out or so many readers out there that'll read a page or two. And if there's too many typos, they're just going to get rid of it. So exactly. definitely. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty forgiving of a typo, but if there's a typo on every single page, it's distracting. Yeah. It is. It is. It can be very distracting. Yeah. All right. So when did you first consider yourself an author? Not a writer, not a novice, yeah. but an author. You know what? I'll still, still struggle today to call myself an author. I don't know why. And I know a lot of us do it. Like we feel like we don't have the right to call ourselves an author. Um, but the I indie often, author? Yeah, I think You so. think? Yeah, I think that's yeah. the... Yeah, I think um, there's still that divide between traditional and, and indie authors. I think it's closing a bit, but um, <clears throat> I usually will often say, oh, I write books. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I'm an author. I'm getting better at it. I'm I'm better at it when like I love doing um, uh, book cons. Like you know you've yes. got comic you've got Comic Con in America. Yep. We have a similar thing over here called Supernova. So um, I'll go to those, and when I'm in those environments where there's lots of indie authors, artists, I yes. feel yep. like I'm in my my crowd. Yeah. So there I feel more comfortable. But sort of from a general community, I say I'm an author. I feel, oh, am I really? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, you are. I am. Yeah. I am. Yeah, I'm getting better. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. All right. So you have written four books in that series. Is there anything else that you have that's currently published? Uh, not published. I've got a short story that's been submitted for an anthology. Um, I've got another short story that I'm tweaking around. I've, short writing briefly is not my forte, so I'm actually trying to challenge myself to write short because okay. I think that's quite a challenge. And I think it's harder um, than novels. Yes, because I'm very good at just keep going. Yep. Um, but no, nothing else published at the moment. I'm hoping to get this current one out in a few months. I've got an amazing cover. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, but I'm, as I said, I'm going through the, you know, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth read through when um, I have a proofreader set up for hopefully the end of next month. And um, we'll see if we get a tick or a big cross. I don't know. Okay. All right. So you've got Awaken. Show us that cover one more time. Oh my God. Beautiful. Who designed this cover? Oh, uh, a gorgeous Melbourne indie artist called um, Kat. Her um, handle is Cat Art Illustrations. She's amazing. She's pretty well known in Melbourne. Um, I funnily enough met her uh, whilst watching her play Quidditch. Oh. Uh, in, in Melbourne. So she was running around with a broom between her legs, chasing the snitch. That's I know. awesome. I know. 
Yeah, so and we're, 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 you know, fairly good buddies. We've even um, shared tables at cons where she sells her artwork and I sell my books. So, yeah, yep. she's pretty ace. Yeah. That's awesome. I love the fact that she's local to you too. That's great. Is she doing the cover for the new book? Did she Actually, do the cover? No, no. Um, she's very busy and getting my last few covers done was quite lucky because she's usually commissioned a year ahead. Um, but I just thought I'd go for something a little bit different this time. And um, a friend of mine who has set up a publishing house, um, they do formatting and covers and um, all other things to do with um, indie publishing. So um, her hubby has a bit of a knack for making book covers. So they've actually put together a pretty nice one for me. Okay, great. Well, I cannot wait to see it. And I hope that I can be part of that cover reveal when you decide to do that. Keep that in mind, yeah, yes. thanks. Okay, so now let's shift a little bit and I want to talk to you about you. Not the author you, but you the person. So how does your life enter, how, how does it enter into that realm of being an author? Are you a mom? Do you still work? And how, if so, if all of that stuff, how? How do you have time? Uh, well, like I said earlier, I started Awaken when I was having a break. So I um, worked as an intensive care nurse for 17 years, which is quite emotionally draining, draining up to that time. Yeah. And in that time, I've, I've been a wife for a very long time. Um, I have three children, one of whom has just finished high school and is in her first year of university. Um, when I first started writing Awaken, I actually wrote a lot of it at night, um, okay. past midnight. Um, I, even though I wasn't work, even though I wasn't working, I'd be busy because the kids were younger and I had a much younger child then, um, and I'd be busy doing stuff there. So I mainly wrote at night. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for your question, I'm a wife. I'm, I'm a nurse. I now I now work again. I, I work in a recovery room now. So I wake people up. Everyone's happy to see me, which is nice. <laughs> they wake up. Um, and But I only do that part-time now. Um, you'll have my three kids who are very busy. Um, and in the last few years, whilst I was wax writing, we actually moved rural onto farm life. So I have a farm with horses and sheep and all kinds of things. So lots to do. So what I tend to do, I write on my days off because all the kids are at school or at uni. Um, I don't often write at night now because I'm pooped, really yep. tired. Um, and, but pre-COVID, again, I love cafe writing. I used to have a, um, a favourite cafe. The entire second book, Surrender, was written in a cafe. So wow. I went there every other day, sat there, had 500 coffees and wrote it. And actually, the day I pressed the end, the lady knew me so I said, oh my gosh, Lou, I just finished my book. So I got free coffee and a free cake. And <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So how has COVID, other than, other than changing your setting from a cafe to your home, I would imagine, how has COVID changed your writing? Um, well, funnily enough, it, made me finish the last two books like I I had actually because I'd gone back to work I had to go back to work um that made me quite exhausted and so there was actually a period I put the writing away for six months I just had to stop um and very very tired but obviously with COVID the world came to a grinding halt yes. my kids were at home doing their schooling um my my hospital I work out pretty much shut down because it's a tiny little hospital um, so I was forced out of work anyway, mm. and it made me finish my books. So it was a distraction from, you know, all that anxiety and stress that that brought to, you know, to the family, to the kids, to, you know, we were, I don't know whether you were, where I live had one of the harshest, most strict lockdowns for four months. You know, we couldn't go past five kilometres outside of our house. You could go only to the supermarket or for medical care. And that was for four months. So we were really isolated. Yeah. So the positive out of that, I finished these books. So that was good. See, and I had the, I had the opposite effect. I had less time because I think work got busier and I've always worked from home. And then I just was so drained and everything that I just didn't feel creative. 
Thank you. I didn't have that creativity flowing. I managed to finish the book that I was writing at the time and got that published out. And I've since started a new one, but it just, the creativity just was not there at the time, mm -hmm. at least mm -hmm. in the beginning months of it all. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else that you want my viewers to know about you or your books before we skip till my fun part at the end? Oh, goodness. Um, oh, that's a very open-ended question. It is. Look, if, if you, if you love reading, just, you know, not particularly for me, but you know, give an indie book a try. Um, I know the market is very saturated and you know, um, a few bad books can, drag the whole sort of uh, indie market down, but there are some really, really ace books and, you know, just take a leaf out of my book, no pun intended. Um, get out there and have a have a look at indie books. My world has been opened by them. Some of the best I've ever read that I actually wish could be made into movies or series or anything, they're, they're, they're out there to be really enjoyed. So. I completely <laughs> agree, completely agree. Okay. so. A special thing that we're doing for those of you who are watching, we are going to be giving away some copies of her book, Awaken. So if you would like a copy of Grace Rose Thomas's book, Awaken, we're gonna give away three, one paperback and two eBooks. So if you want to win, you need to comment below and tell me you want to be entered in the drawing. It's that simple, comment below, tell me you want to be entered. And that can be either on the YouTube channel or it can be on my website blog. Comment in one of those spots, like this video and share it with your friends and they can all get in on the action of this giveaway. But three copies, one paperback, two ebook copies is what we're gonna give away. All right, I end all of my interviews with a quick 10 question questionnaire. It is in honor of James Lipton's Inside the Actor Studio. So if you have not yet seen it, fantastic. If you have, then you know what to expect. Quick questions, you don't need to think. So it's the first answer that pops into your mind. All right, and no explanations needed. All right, what is your favorite word? Is this for me? Yes, it's for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who else am I interviewing? Okay, um, nice. oh my gosh. Um, favorite word oh i'm a mom i'm gonna say please <laughs> nice. Nice. what is your least favorite word oh i can't say it's rude <laughs> i say it's, yeah i have teenagers okay yeah. okay so you're probably not gonna like question number seven but we'll go to question number three yeah. what turns you on oh my gosh um Oh, my husband. Oh, he's going to love that. What turns you off? Oh, whinging, whining, complaining. Whinging. I've never heard that word. Okay. Whining and complaining. I love that. So what sound or noise do you love? Uh, my horses, actually. I love when they, they do this funny little sound and their nostrils quiver when <laughs> I walk up to them. It's like like nickering or, yeah, it's very cute. Okay. What sound or noise do you hate? Oh, um, oh. oh my dog itching. It's really disgusting. She she itches and snuffles and, oh, it's a, quite a foul smell. Foul, yeah. foul, foul sound. So. <laughs> Okay, you might not want to answer this, but I hope you will. What is your favorite curse word? Um, the F one. Okay. I say it too much. Okay. I sort of, I sort of say, I don't know if you have this acronym in the US, WTAF or WTO. Yes, we do. I say it all the time. Sometimes it just gets me through the day. But yes. I often, I often think it more than I say it out loud. It's actually quite. Um, relieves the stress. Absolutely. I can totally see that. Totally Isn't get it? that. Yeah. Yes. All right. Question number eight. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Um, oh, other than a full-time writer. Um, 
I actually am probably in another life would have liked to have been a police officer. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. What profession would you not want to try? Proctologist. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It came out really quick, didn't it? It did. <laughs> it's almost as if you'd been thinking about that, but okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, final question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Oh my goodness. Uh, you were all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. Thank you so much for doing this interview with me. I really appreciate it. And I hope that my readers will run out and grab a copy of your book definitely order a copy. I will leave a link in the description below of where you can get it, as well as where you can follow Grace and uh, just be up to date on what she's doing. She's on Instagram and she's on Twitter and she's on Facebook and she has her own uh, website. All of those links will be down in the description below. So go check her out. All right, Grace, thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you.